And of course, we've got our usual panel in studio as well. Simon Bolton from Aqualis, Fred van der Tang from Randstad, and Peter Gleason joining me from Chandler McLeod. Um, you guys kind of had different thoughts heading into this one, and we, we know it's always volatile. Um, Simon, you were expecting to see something quite strong. What, yeah, and we've seen what was the signs for you, though? But I think we've seen clients still hiring and people still moving jobs. That's the biggest indicator we have. I mean, that's a big number. I don't think any of us were expecting that. <laughs> um, but these figures are volatile, like you say. So not unexpected, but I think a great result. Yeah, I think, uh, just remember, there was no movement whatsoever in full-time jobs last month. There was a loss in part-time jobs. Uh, work, uh, ours work went up last month with the loss in jobs, and they've gone up again now. So, look, I just think it's just a bit more of the same. Um, the flexible workforce continues. Companies want to be agile. They're putting people on as they need them, but they're not committing that much to full-time. Although it was good to see 16,000 full-time jobs. I was yeah. surprised at that number. And, and to you, Fred, as well? Well, I'm surprised by the number, so it's positive news, uh, I guess. Uh, it also, I think, points out that we still have a two-speed economy or many speeds. And, of course, as we've said before, quite a few of the big layoffs hit the, the headlines, but there's still companies that are hiring for sure. Yeah. Also, what we seem to see when we talk to the banks, it looks like uh, they're probably bottoming out in terms of their hiring. Of course, they've lost, they've, they've lost uh, quite a few staff over the last months. But it looks like their internal talent pools are drying up and they're starting to get back to the hiring front again, both themselves and also through ourselves. That's interesting. I, but I find it interesting that you guys get surprised by these numbers, you know, as much as the economists do, because you guys are kind of at the coal face. It's like, what, what's kind of happening where, where you are? Maybe it's about hiring intentions as, as they don't kind of meet the real world. I'm not sure what it is. I'll make a comment on that. I think that there was a good point made by the, the previous uh, speaker. Juliana. Juliana, in that, uh, you know, um, a number of the companies uh, and sectors have actually made significant changes. In other words, they've laid a lot of people off. Now, those people may not have even entered the market yet. They may be just thinking about where they're at, what, what their options are. And I think we will see some impact of that in, in coming months. In terms of what we actually see, um, we only service a certain part of the market. Uh, mm -hmm. We probably service about 20 to 25 percent of the market in terms of the actual uh, on hire market and, and where there's fee for service for what we do. Um, so a lot of it is actually happening out there in the marketplace with individual networks and, yeah. just, uh, and the like. So. Yeah, also I think it's important to see that uh, the, the labour market is changing. Uh, everybody talks about retail being soft, and I guess it is, but then at the same time, uh, online shopping creates new roles in distribution, in call centres, around ICT roles as well. So the whole landscape, you know, I think it's dangerous to look at the total numbers only. If you, if you deep down, if you deep, if you deep dive deep, I'm sorry, mm. uh, into industries and specific sectors and activities, the picture is very, very different. Mm. And Simon, just quickly to you as well. I think Fred's point's right. You see job losses in sectors, but at the same time, they are hiring. We talk about financial services. You know, there's still areas of financial services where they need very technical, very specific, very specialised resource. That resource is rare, and organisations are still having to find those sorts of people. Oh. More by absolute necessity than necessarily the need to do so. OK, so that's a bit of the background, some colour um, with the labour market at the moment. Let's go back to Juliana Roadley, um, as promised. Juliana, just now that you've had a, had a chance to actually look at some of the more specific details, anything standing out to you in terms of um, other messages, other trends in the, in the labour market? Well, look, I think, you know, the number was a surprise for many, as we've been saying, you know, it's very, uh, you know, movement-driven data and we might have to wait a little bit longer to get a true read. I suppose if you look over the three-month period, there is a fair bit of an uptick in the uh, job markets, which is good to see. We know the population is growing, so maybe this is some of the areas that we're starting to see growth coming through. We know the migration uh, is increasing. We're also seeing that some of those skilled worker uh, permits have been extended, so maybe that's where we're getting a little bit of a buzz from. I think we'll have to wait a little bit longer until we get that quarterly data to actually see where the jobs are being created and lost. That's always majorly important for the RBA and for the markets. But overall, I think it is, is just one read. Uh, it's a very strong read and uh, it is good to see that, you know, part-time work was still a pretty good number as well. Juliana, um, it, just to be clear, that you haven't seen any revisions either, have you? Because that's sometimes something that pops up later. No revisions to previous no, numbers? No. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Juliana's gone through the details, so I appreciate that. Juliana Roadley uh, joining us from Comsec. So just to reiterate, what we've got now is um, that participation rate, obviously, on screen, but the major figures, the full-time employment, um, we added 15,800 jobs in March. We added 28,000 part-time jobs. Uh, remembering that we need to create about 15,000 jobs to keep the, the jobless rate um, steady, but we did well more than that, about 44,000 in total. Um, expecting the jobless rate to tick up 
uh, over the course of the year. Um, I guess Merrill Lynch economists were expecting it to, uh, to happen a bit sooner. They were actually thinking 5.5% uh, we would see on the jobless rate today. And I can see St George, Goldman Sachs, um, TD Securities, they were saying 5.4%. So it certainly has surprised um, to see the unemployment rate just at 5.2% remaining where it was in February. A bit of payback perhaps um, being, being seen in these numbers from the previous month. Um, I want to go back to, to my panel in the studio and Fred, this idea of job losses in the banking sector, you said you think that's bottoming out but I feel like it kind of hasn't even shown up yet in maybe the official numbers. It, it feels like every month we say, oh will the finance sector job losses show up and I don't know, it doesn't seem like that has happened. Well, our industry, and we see it the same at Vansa, we're typically uh, way ahead of the, what happens in the news. So the job losses were announced in this quarter but we saw a slowing in hiring as of the, the winter of last year already. Yep. So we'd been See, see, we, we, we saw that happening already and again to our, to, to our impression talking to the banks it looks like uh, their internal talent pools have, have dried up uh, some of the layoffs have already happened some people have actually uh, chosen to take the initiatives themselves and look for new ventures because there's still quite a few job opportunities for mm. those that are talented and are working in the skill short areas we've seen for instance a specific example quite a few of the banks have offshored some of their IT activities and uh, IT activities uh, offshore mm -hmm. um, and those, those people the people that work in those roles can quite easily still find roles in other sectors mm -hmm. I want to bring in um, our next guest as well from ANZ because earlier in the week we saw the survey of job ads from ANZ rising and it seemed to suggest higher intentions are continuing to improve amongst businesses. Let's go to Ivan Cahoon who's Head of Australian Economics and Property Research at ANZ. Um, and Ivan, does this kind of cement the picture that um, in fact businesses are confident to hire despite all the gloom and doom we seem to be talking about? Yeah, look, I think there's um, a lot of mixed factors going on in Australia but our job ads have started to improve. Um, out earlier today, Seek job ads were also up. Um, and both of those were showing a bit of softness at the end of last year. Uh, remember then, uh, there was a lot of negativity around about Europe. Uh, and even in the employment figures, we could see that. And in today's numbers, again, I think there's quite a big rise in uh, part-time female employment, which was very soft back at uh, the end of last year. So it does look like we're still moving uh, slowly forward uh, in the employment numbers and also the unemployment rates remaining very stable, around 5.2%. Um, Stephen Kukoulis uh, on uh, Twitter, who we also speak to, an economist, saying, yep, great, excellent jobs result, but it actually goes back to a very modest trend rate of growth the last few months. We always have to take these numbers um, kind of as a, as a group, don't we have to kind of put them together? So, yeah, does the trend kind of change from these numbers? Yeah, look, I think it's, uh, it's still fair to say, and I agree with that, the trend is a bit slower than you'd want. Uh, and, but the trend in job ads is picking up. So uh, together, I think uh, for interest rates, it suggests you get perhaps a little bit of uh, further stimulus from the RBA, but not a lot in a very quick uh, succession. Do you think that um, the, the May rate cut expectation should be adjusted? Um, uh, having yeah. seen the numbers today? I'm a little less confident than I was before this uh, number and with the job ads trends. I s still think we'll get a rate cut uh, in early May but I'm not quite as uh, confident as I was before these numbers. Does it come down to, it really comes down to inflation though doesn't it? This Look, is the key. Inflation is very important um, which uh, it gives them the room to adjust policy if they uh, feel they need to. Um, this number is again would, would say well look unemployment is still very low it's 5.2 percent so I, I think really for May it's, a, it's sort of it's most likely to happen the market's pricing another, another 75 basis points of rate cuts and this number doesn't and the trend in job ads doesn't seem, say you'll get those further three interest rate cuts I think that's the more important one for the markets it's going to be more consistent with generally um, if there's further cuts, a slow, drawn-out easing cycle, not uh, rapid-fire rate cuts. Ivan, uh, um, maybe a final question on the housing market because the weak uh, housing market's getting uh, a lot of coverage at the moment, a lot, of, uh, a lot of attention. What if property prices fall further or that sector continues to deteriorate? Are you expecting more job, job losses specifically out of that sector? Yeah, look, I think 
like everything in Australia, there's very two-speed stories at the moment. So even in today's numbers, we can see the mining states yeah. doing a lot better. We can see that in the property uh, prices. Uh, we can see that in a lot of building approvals where um, it depends where you're exposed to. Those uh, states that are exposed to mining are doing better across a broad range of fronts. Uh, but the rest of the economy isn't doing horrendously badly. Um, it's, uh, it's finding things a bit soft. Certainly if property prices fell away a long way that would have a big impact. That's not our expectation and I think uh, if we get this next rate cut, which I still think is more, more likely than not, I think that will help uh, um, stabilise prices. We've still got very good immigration, very strong population growth. That's driving rents uh, pretty strongly that's a supportive factor so I'm not that worried about property prices falling away a lot from here. You can kind of you just talked about the two-speed nature I've just seen some state-by-state -state figures we're flashing them up on screen but in um, well someone's kind of putting a few numbers together but um, Victoria's lost 31,000 full-time jobs since July of last year WA by contrast has added 27,000 um, it kind of goes to the policy dilemma of, of, for the RBA doesn't it? Yeah, well, look, you've got only one interest rate. You can't set a different interest rate in West Australia as opposed to uh, New South Wales. So um, they're managing for the average of the economy. Um, Victoria and New South Wales have been the soft areas, um, certainly Tasmania as well. Um, and they've got relative exposures to manufacturing and finance. Um, and then the other sectors that are much, or the other states that are much more exposed to uh, mining and resources have been doing a lot better. Um, just a final reaction uh, from, from you, Ivan, to uh, Adam Carr's comments I've just seen come up on Twitter as well, responding to the jobs numbers. Um, he says, jobs numbers today consistent with solid domestic demand growth, hours worked also rose, people talking down the Australian economy, shut up, they know very little. Um, too strong? Oh, pardon, too, too strong? strong? Oh, look, uh, we, we are always a, a little bit more uh, measured in our analysis, <laughs> I'd say, than Adam. Um, oh, come on, Ivan. <laughs> yes. Uh, look, I think you look at the trend in the employment numbers, they're very volatile. Uh, the trend has been reasonably soft for a while. Um, our numbers are improving slowly in job ads. That does suggest employment will continue growing. There's still a lot of movement under the surface of that flat unemployment rate. I mean, very strong growth in mining and related uh, construction, but, you know, job losses in manufacturing. So it's not quite as, uh, you know, simple as the, uh, the, the simple, um, you know, flat unemployment rate would suggest. Thank you so much. Great to um, grab you at this very busy time, Ivan. Thanks, Ivan Cahoon from ANZ. Um, and yeah, the economy adding 44,000 jobs. I can see um, the Australian dollar actually bounced, I think, as high as about 103.7. I think we're at the moment about 103 um, and a half. Might be able to just double check all of that. But um, certainly we, we know that we've seen the, the job starter um, uh, prompt a spike in the Australian dollar, perhaps short-lived. These are always kind of knee-jerk reactions from currency markets. But um, back to our panel because, you know, that interest rate debate really uh, remains quite fierce. I don't think we got anything conclusive out of, out of that, um, uh, that read today, guys. Um, let's talk about from here on in. I'm just trying to get a gauge from the economists about whether they think the unemployment rate starts ticking up or do we kind of go back to even the comment of the banking sector, Fred, um, that maybe even kind of the worst is behind us. What are we thinking? Well, I think that, that that's, that's a tough call to make still. I think picking up on the RBA uh, point, um, we still see that wages are still increasing. Eh? Uh, so despite the job market being flat, uh, wages still increase by 5 to 10% in some, some, some companies with a lot of pressure coming from mining as well. So that is something to take in, into con consideration. Yeah, I'd absolutely agree with Fred on that point because the reality is it's not all over. Sorry, I'd love to be able to say well, it's going to be great and uh, that's going to be our unemployment We're going to get payback next yeah, month, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, <laughs> we know it's going to happen. And the other thing is that I think that without wanting to be too... But maybe, I'm just trying to get to the fact, maybe we're talking down the economy too much. Yeah, like, yeah. as Adam Carr says, shut up, there's it's fine. Yeah, let's not yeah. talk ourselves into it. I said last month... Um, 
I didn't, I used the word man up, so anyway, whatever up and, <laughs> yeah. and actually put some people on because there is business out there. Yeah. The job, the, sorry, the advertising is interesting because the advertising is a tick up, that, but that actually means in some respects that it's actually harder to fill the jobs. You know, I think you'll find a lot of those roles have been re-advertised, a lot of the, you know, they're just not filling the jobs. What are they doing? They're putting part-time equivalents in to actually fill the void while they find the perfect candidate. And employers have got to realise the perfect candidates aren't actually out there. Mm. And I do think under the surface of it though is really what's happening and in some areas of course we've said so many times two speed whatever terminology you want to use some of the sectors are suffering a lot more than others some people are making their own decisions about moving out of banking and finance into maybe fast moving consumer goods or a similar consumer related business um, and you know there's a lot happening underneath mm -hmm. and all of a sudden it's 5.2 ho hum let's move on mm -hmm. I don't think so there's yeah. a lot happening Perfect. Simon? I think the other difference is here that employers are looking at retention strategies. We talked about wage growth there. Um, that's one part of retaining your employees. Uh, but I think organisations are much more switched on now to maintaining and keeping their talent because, as we say, the talented people are few in number and hard to find. And there is a bit of complacency creeping into hiring managers of, we'll wait, we'll see if we can get exactly the right thing. But, you know, that isn't going to be the case. Those skill shortages are alive, hence the in incoming workers from overseas. Yeah. Um, so it's... But we keep beating ourselves up. Mm. You know, economists were predicting by the end of this year, unemployment 5.75%. I think that's probably looking at the, on the very dark It's and probably looking a bit stretched, I'd, I'd say, now. Um, Fred, just to you on retention, um, because if that is the big issue, what are the better companies doing at the moment? I think the better companies are the ones that are uh, putting those ads on Seek and the web, etc., because they are aware that they need to continue to build their employer brand. Okay. Uh, which is both important to attract future talent because you know there are skills shortages across the board but it's also about retaining the people they have in-house already uh, and that links to another point which is also still very valid uh, we still have a productivity challenge in Australia that's been widely published as well so against uh, increasing wages and maybe the whole economy being flattish that still is a challenge and every good employer knows that there's a strong link between engagement people being incentivized encouraged to do, to do a good job and stay with them as well so these things i think the smart employers get that and they actively work in uh, working on their uh, employer brand on the outside as well as preaching the good news on the inside yeah. Don't Final comments? Too, don't, mm. don't take people for granted. Um, they're there, they're actually keeping your business in the shape it is today that allows you to grow and that's why you have vacancies. So the employee value proposition, very important and respect people and recognise that they are part of your growth strategy. Okay. And Simon, just finally to you as well. Yeah, at Aqualis we did an interesting survey. We yeah. said, um, who is enjoying turning up to work on Monday? 73% came back saying yes they were. These were middle managers. Um, but I think that compares very... Do they have to be compiled by the boss who then gave it to <laughs> yeah, you guys? Right, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm not sure if that was the case. But, but you know, two no, years ago that was a case yeah. where there was a real distrust between employees and employers. People were suspicious. People were very yeah, nervous. Right. And that seems to have shifted You mean GFC now. era? That's right, yeah. I think now there's a lot more trust and alignment between employees and employers that, again, the right organisations, I think, can really exploit and do very well by keeping. Yep, kind of a good news note to finish on. Thank you so much, Simon Bolton from Aqualis, uh, Peter Gleeson from Chandler McLeod and Fred Van Der Tank from uh, Randstad.